Is anybody else getting deja vu? I am. So this 12th Doctor figure time again as today I'm going to be taking a look at the second of two releases from the 2017 Collector Series line and this time it is the 12th Doctor figure from the Series 9 story Under the Lake, Before the Flood, whatever it's called, that one. But yeah, it's got water and I think and ghost stuff. I've not watched it since. But yeah, this is the 12th Doctor. As you can see, it's exactly the same to the previous version. However, this time with a green jumper and some polka dots underneath. Look at the packaging, as you can see it's exactly the same to the previous version, so you have the Doctor Who logo at the top, 5 plus there. Then we get the 5.5 slash 14 centimeter scale collector series bubble there, this is lies. And then we get the 12th Doctor collector figure along with the catch options logo once again. The figure is nicely displayed in the box along with its accessory and this of course stretches along to the side as well. The top and the sides of the box are pretty much exactly the same as the front. Then the back of the box once again contains the Doctor Who logo, the title of the figure. Then we get a write up of the 12th Doctor along with a bit of information about series 9 at the bottom. We also have the image of the prototype of this figure with a 12th Doctor that looks rather Miffed. At the bottom and base we get some company information once again. We have the 12th Doctor out of his box and as you can see it is exactly the same sculpt compared to the one that I've previously reviewed. However, this time the paint palette is a lot darker. We have the green hoodie in there and the black trousers, making it a little bit of a hark back to the Series 8 figure a little bit more than the other version. However, this time the paint apps on the face and the jacket do tend to remain exactly the same. Taking a closer look at the woolly jumper with the holes in, because let's face it, that's what we're all here for. So as you can see, it is exactly the same sculpt to the other version, making it incredibly vague so they can slap any paint on top of this and pass it off as pretty much any costume that they want because hey re-releases are fun so as you can see it's pretty much exactly the same really so we have the basic outline underneath and then we have the black glossy paint applied to the top as in the holes in the jumper have in fact been replicated just by using simple little white dots of paint. The jacket underneath is exactly the same to the other version, however this time it is a dark green colour. So as you can see the same paint apps have of course applied. We get the silver zipper at the bottom and top there that has been rather nicely sculpted along with the different piping designs at the bottom and top of the jacket as well as a few additional pieces of creasing once again making it look like the actual jacket is tight around his body. It also continues along the side very slightly and then we also have the hood at the top which once again has the same creasing applied to this it's been very nicely sculpted so it flows over the top of the shoulders once again and then sort of collects all at the back there once again having a little bit of a sag along with the different pieces of material flapping over and once again much like the previous version this is of course a separate piece meaning that it could be removed okay this is of course also a new sculpt however the old sculpt compared to that of the other version so as you can see once again this is taking on the baggy sort of effect that the previous one did so we have the black buttons which have once again been painted rather well and sculpted actually onto the body which is nice to see and then we have the pipe pink tubing design going all the way around the sides of the jacket as well along with lots of different creases we do also have the different slips there where the buttons would of course connect to along with once again the pockets on either side and so we have sort of the gunshot wound style thing that has in fact also been implanted on my previous version so I think it might be a similar thing to that odd line that was on the previously sculpted 12th Doctor figure that is a little bit of a consistent error going all the way through all of the releases so yeah that is a little bit annoying taking a look at the back of the jacket nothing really too much to talk about it's just the average dark blue colour along with a little bit of creasing here and there, nothing really too much however, but we do have the stitching line going all the way down the middle which is once again accurate to the jacket as seen in the show. Then of course much like all the other 12th Doctor figures, if you do bend back the jacket you can of course reveal the red lining underneath. Once again this has been done in the more bright primary red colour which is nice to see making it stand out a lot more compared to that of sort of the rusty orange colour as seen on the 13th Doctor set one which was definitely a little bit off and a little bit weird so I'm glad they've returned back to the red as this is a lot nicer to look at. A bit more stronger compared to that of the other version meaning that you can't really get him to hold the jacket forward meaning that the red lining is sort of a little bit hidden constantly which is a little bit of a shame. Taking a look at the arms, there isn't really too much to talk about, just the occasional creasing as per usual. However, on the opposite side, we do of course get the buttons, which have once again been individually sculpted, which is nice to see a few black paint apps on there, along with the third one in being red, which is a good attention to detail. One of the hands has been sculpted nicely to be able to hold the sonic screwdriver. Once again, this has been detailed rather well, so we have the four fingers individually sculpted along the thumb, and a few individual creases in there as well. Once again, I do believe that this has been made slightly bigger compared to that of the other 12 Doctor figures that we've seen, probably to help compromise with the bigger sonic screwdriver. Then we have the second hand, which is once again in sort of the karma open hand position. Once again, this has all been individually sculpted with the fingers and the thumb. However, it's nice to see on the inner part of the hand, you do have the detailing and the paint app of the gold band around the 
the ring. Moving down to the trousers now, it is a little bit more boring to be honest, it's a little bit like the Series 8 figure where it is essentially just black. Once again, this is I do believe exactly the same sculpt to the Series 8 figure. All different creases and the trouser details have of course remained, so you have the baggy design at the bottom there, a few different creases along the kneecaps and things, so yeah, right off a well done to be quite honest. General paint app is sort of just a glossy black colour, however we do tend to have a little bit more of a difference in paint app at the top there being a bit more of a glossy colour, which is a little bit unusual. At the very bottom we of course have the shoes, which once again are sort of the new sculpt that we used on the other figure as well, which is the main reason why this figure is taller. So we have a few different details and things once again in there with a few different creases and things of the nice stippling design going all the way along the sides as well as on the top of the shoe, along with the detailing of the laces in there as well. However, what's really nice to see is you have sort of the little tag piece coming out the back of the shoe once again, which is something accurate to what is seen in the TV show, as well as sort of the greyish brown soles in there as well, along with a few designs of the tread at the bottom with the company information. So again, exactly the same problems to the previous figure that I've reviewed, whereas it is a vast improvement compared to the original version. It looks a lot less miserable, it looks a little bit more happy and sort of a little bit more serene, I guess, or just like a relaxed face. The hair is also a lot more interesting, as you can see. It tends to be, in fact, quite similar to my other version. I know that a lot of people have been saying about how the variations between the different grey highlights have been something that's been quite prominent on different releases. However, with mine, they do tend to be quite similar, so we have the different designs there of all the different flex, really bring out some of the different curls in the hair which is nice to see and once again something a lot more interesting compared to the original version however the main faults are once again in the face as you can see generally the sculpt is quite good it looks like capaldi especially from the side profile as you can see you can sort of see a bit of capaldi in there especially on the nose and the top half of the face i think that's what in fact annoys me the sculpt itself does tend to be something that is in fact not a problem whatsoever it is of course the paint application on the top of this so as you can see the eyes have been rather well done both of them are looking forward and the eyebrows have been done rather nicely as well nothing too massive like the time of the doctor head sculpt it looks a little bit more normal and the lips have been done rather nicely as well however once again they do look a little bit weird and a little bit like he's pouting the main issue with the first sculpt is of course the fact that he is a 50 year old man and he literally looks like a 30 year old with grey hair. It just doesn't make sense. Once again this figure lacks much like how the previous figure did and the series 8 figures did. There's absolutely no creasing whatsoever even on the top of the head of the forehead, no bags under the eyes. You do get a little bit of definition of where sort of the cheekbones would be, even around the lips as well. Some of the details that we in fact had on the series 8 one such as around the mouth and things like that have in fact been taken away and I'm definitely putting this down to either the sculpt being a little bit too light or the paint that's been applied over the top being a little bit too cloggy and a little bit too soft. It does tend to be something that has literally been slapped on. I think that the paint apps are definitely a lot less sharp from what they used to be, especially on some of the previous classic series figures. However, with this one, it's just a little bit odd. It needs a lot more creasing in there. Just to give a spin of the rest of the head, as you can see, generally the curls and things have been done rather well. I like the way that it sort of tapers off at the back there, having a few clumps and things. Once again, looks rather natural. And I think that definitely the profile shows that it is Peter Capaldi. However, we do still have this annoying manufacturer line going all the way around the side of the head and round to the opposite side as well, which is something that I guess can't be helped. However, it could sort of be fixed up a little bit better. Just to give a little bit of a roundup of the articulation, because that is a thing people like for some reason. So we have the articulation at the head, don't turn it all the way though, because you'll probably get paint scratches. We have the board joint at the arms, and then the 360 at the upper arms as well. Bend at the elbow, 360 at the wrists, 360 at the waist, then we have the bend out at the legs as well, and sort of out to the sides. The 360 at the thigh, this is a little bit more loose compared to my other version, and at the knee. And then we also have 360 at the shoe as well. We do get the addition of the brand new Sonnet screwdriver. This has been painted right Rather well and the paint application on it does tend to be rather sharp which is nice to see although once again it doesn't make sense that it actually comes with this figure because it didn't appear in the story or with this costume but I think that they're just doing it anyway just in case that they don't do a series 10 version meaning that we have all of the sonic screwdrivers that I had it sort of makes sense I don't really mind too much because to be quite honest I'm sort of sick of a length Dr. Sonic screwdrivers by now so as you can see the sculpt is pretty good we have the different buckles and things there and the rotating handle the gold band the emitter at the top there it's sort of the silver simplified set and then at the very bottom we get all the different handles and things and the ridges at the bottom even down to the little gold splodge of paint there so overall it's quite a nice little thing to be honest and rather well painted because this is quite a large sonic screwdriver it does sort of fit into the hand and you can sort of position it so you're sort of holding the little handly thing but yeah it's not really a design that i particularly like too much it's one of those ones i like then dislike every so often but yeah he holds it quite well to be honest it's a nice thing to sort of having point i guess but yeah even though it wasn't with the costume i don't mind but given a quick comparison to the other 12th Doctor 2017 figure available. As you can see, there isn't really too much in it, to be quite honest. There is, of course, the revised paint apps in there, and both of them are different more so than the Series
rosette versions of just having the different shirts at least this one in fact has different trousers and things and both of them are in fact sort of passable as accurate figures from the stories that they're from because there isn't really too much of a difference between the different costumes really in the material wise that would be passable on a figure but yeah both of them are good in their own right really and then comparing this figure to the previous series 8 versions of the 12th doctor once again the same similar issue of the scale problem that i went into in the previous review where this figure is a little bit taller compared to the already too tall version of the series 8 12th doctor and it is of course far superior the paint apps on this version are a lot sharper and generally overall a lot more interesting however the scale issue is still a thing because it is still the same sculpt just to give you an idea of how big this figure in fact is, it is of course around 6 inches tall. Towards the left you do of course have the original sculpt of the 10th Doctor, just for the spiky version of the head it is pretty much exactly the same height. And then we have the most recent version of the 10th Doctor being the tuxedo version. So as you can see, there is pretty much a consistency between the height of them. It is literally just the new ones and the new sculpts of the 12th Doctor. And I do believe that partially the older ones are slightly smaller than they should be. However, it still would have been nice if they sort of remained consistent with the older format because that kind of makes sense because they've been doing figures in that scale now for pretty much 10 years so it really doesn't make sense to change it now so yeah it isn't really much of a too big problem I don't mind too much it is just a little bit annoying but overall this figure pretty much exactly the same summary to the last one because it's the same sculpt it is a good one I like it I think that it's a vast improvement compared to the series 8 figure as to the color scheme I think that it's a nice choice I quite like the darker hoodie and I like the shirt underneath however it might be a little bit too dark and it might be reverting back slightly to the series 8 dark figures that were slightly boring however with this one it is generally a lot more interesting the sculpt is really good and I sort of feel like the quality overall is generally returning back to what it used to be with the line it feels like a better quality plastic compared to the previous versions which seemed oddly a little bit lighter so I'm glad that we're reverting back to what the five inch line used to be. I also like the addition of the sonic screwdriver even though it's not really relevant for this figure because it's a different costume but hey we might not get a series 10 version of him so I can see why they included it. The thing that generally overall the head is also an improvement as well increasing on the face and the fact that he's a 50 year old man that looks like a 30 year old not even that he could look even younger but yeah it's sort of a little bit of an issue that probably won't be rectified now and of course the scale issue which is a thing that is a whole problem with the 5.5 collector series as a whole. As to what one's better, this one or the other version, to be quite honest, it's down to personal preference. There's absolutely not really much in it, to be honest, because they are exactly the same. See, it's up to you. If you want one with a white shirt, you can get one with a white shirt. If you want one with a black one, then you can get the black one. It is basically up to you. They're both just as good as each other, really, in their own right. It's just personal preference. So thanks for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big like. Please subscribe if you're not already. If any questions, please do leave them below and be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all next time. So thanks for watching and bye for now.